Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new video on the Flying Kayak YouTube channel. Today I have an entire set of cameras here for you guys. Most of you probably know this little device here. It's an Instax Mini 9 instant photography camera by Fujifilm. These things are pretty expensive, costing around about 80 euros where I live. And in fact, they are cool, but they do produce very small pictures. Now, I wondered if there was any way to get an instant camera any cheaper. And that's why I brought these with me. So stay tuned to find out more about Polaroid original cameras from the 1970s, 80s, 90s and early 2000s and what you can do with them today. So I'm just going to assume that most of you guys have probably seen either a movie or some other sort of, I don't know, picture that contains one or more of the cameras you see here with me. I'm going to present most of them to you guys. The camera that I'm holding in my hand right now is a Polaroid Spectra 1200SI. So this is a relatively modern Polaroid from the early 2000s. This camera, believe it or not, is still available on eBay in large quantities and in fact costs only around 20 euros. Now you might think 20 euros for a camera, that's okay, but is there still film for this? And the answer to that question as well is yes. Polaroid Originals still produces film for most of the cameras behind me. In fact, not for this one, which is why it's the first one I picked out. This Polaroid Spectra cost me about 20 euros. It's an awesome camera and it does some great shots. Let me just quickly show you one or two shots. You're going to probably see them on a closer perspective in the GoPro. And a lot of these shots are really awesome as the Spectra offers a wide image format. Unlike most of the other cameras that I'm about to show you and definitely has a much larger image than the Fujifilm Instax. The next camera in the lot is one that most of you would probably associate with Polaroid. This is a Polaroid Impulse Autofocus. These were produced in the 80s and 90s and these are incredibly beautiful little box cameras. Although they are bigger and a bit heavier and bulkier than the Fujifilm Instax, they are incredibly well-built cameras that still last to this day. This camera has a speciality. Aside from, of course, the flash, it has a sonar autofocus. That's this little device here, which basically means that this camera will automatically focus a subject once you've selected it through the viewfinder, allowing you to make crisp, sharp images. The Fujifilm Instax, on the other hand, has only a fixed focus, so no automatic focusing for you on that little yellow camera. You might be wondering, how much will one of these run you? Well, that depends on where you decide to buy them. I bought this particular one for 5 euros. Yep, you heard me right. This one cost me 5 euros and it's even still got an original band on it and everything. It's an awesome camera for very low amounts of money. Online you'll find them anywhere between 10 to 20 euros, however if you go to local garage sales you might get them as low as even 2 euros, which is nothing for a camera. It takes Polaroid Original 600 film, which works awesome and provides some beautiful shots. The next camera I'm going to show you is one that I bought for approximately 10 euros. This camera is uh, a bit harder to work. It's a Polaroid Supercolor 635. This one here costs around 10 euros and that's about the price you'll find them online if you do a little digging and take part in an auction on eBay. These cameras are incredibly cool and do look pretty much the way a Polaroid would look, but they do have one disadvantage, they only have a fixed focus. So just like the Instax, they have a close-up lens and a normal lens, so no focus and no autofocus for you guys on a camera like this one. Anyway, beautiful little camera, I like the way it looks and it's a really cool thing to have on the shelf. If I wanted to shoot Polaroid Originals 600 film, I'd probably use an impulse autofocus as my primary camera. 
Now, the last camera in the bunch doesn't even look like a camera, right? This looks like something weird, maybe a flask or some sort of, I don't know, purse. But this is in fact the most incredible camera that I have probably ever used. Just give me a second to show it to you. So unlike the other Polaroid cameras, in this bunch, this one actually folds out. It is known as a Polaroid SX70 and this is more than just a simple Polaroid camera. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an SLR. As most of you have probably noticed, this is not an ordinary camera. Unlike the other Polaroid cameras, like for example this Spectra camera, it does not have an external viewfinder, it has a lens. And that's it. The Spectra has a lens and a viewfinder, whereas the SX70 that I'm holding in my hand has only one lens. This is because, just like modern digital SLRs or single lens reflex cameras, there's an assortment of mirrors inside that reflects the light up through this tiny little viewfinder port. This has one incredible advantage. What you see is what you get. If you look through this little viewfinder port, you will see exactly what comes in through this lens, allowing you to actually manually focus this one. Now this is a special little model. This one here has a sonar autofocus on top. So, if I push the button, the focus adjusts to focus onto the nearest thing to the sonar autofocus. This SX70 cost me about 80 euros, so it's about the same price as the Instax Mini. However, this camera has a lot more features and manual control in my opinion, and it produces awesome pictures together with Polaroid Originals SX70 film. So it's a cool camera for a cool price, with cool images and incredible features. It's the same price as a Fujifilm Instax. So a lot of you guys are probably wondering, why do people even still buy Instax cameras if there's things like this one and the other Polaroid cameras I just showed you around out there? Actually, that question has a fairly simple answer. Polaroid cameras only take Polaroid film. Now, I mentioned that there's a company out there, Polaroid Originals, that produces Polaroid film. The film, I don't have a box here with me, so I can't exactly show you the film, but it looks like film. Basically works with any of the camera models I just showed you. It works with the Spectra as well as the SX70 and the Polaroid 600 models. There's just different types of film. So there's 600 film, SX70 film and Spectra film. But there's a few problems. Spectra film is now discontinued. So this little camera doesn't have a lot of film left. In fact, I've got one of the last boxes I have inside of it right now, and after that, this camera will most likely go to sleep permanently. So I wouldn't recommend you buy a Spectra. If you're looking for something with a Spectra format, Instax might actually be able to help you out, because they've got a wide format camera, the Instax Wide, which apparently produces fairly similar results when compared with a Spectra camera. Now, the other cameras still have film produced for them, and they will probably still have film produced for them for a long, long time, as these are very popular cameras, and producing film for them is more than possible for Polaroid Originals, which is now only Polaroid, actually, as they acquired the original band, uh, sorry, the original brand, as far as I know. But... The thing is, Polaroid Original 600 film costs you about 18 to 19 euros, whereas the film packs for this little boy run you just around about 10 euros. So you're gonna save on the camera, but you're gonna pay for the film. Also, Polaroid Original film only offers you 8 images per film, whereas Fujifilm Instax offers you 10 images per film, so you get two images more and you get a lower price. So yes, it's true, 
Polaroid Originals film is a lot more expensive if you compare it with Fujifilm Instax. Still, if you're looking for a very cheap entry into instant analog photography, those cameras that I just showed you, the Polaroid models, are definitely the way to go. They're much cheaper to get than the Instax cameras and they have a lot more manual control. Both the SX70 and the Spectra 1200 provide a lot of manual control. You can set exposure, you can set different other values like for example the focus whilst at the same time retaining incredible simplicity and high quality components like glass lenses and SLR functionality as in the SX70. So what should you do? If you're just looking to have a casual camera snapper for parties or those occasional bar outings where a Polaroid image is definitely a cool addition, go get one of these. They're fun, they're incredibly good, and the images I've seen come from this are insanely beautiful. However, they are a bit colder than normal images produced by Polaroid. I do think they are a bit sharper though. If you're looking to do something like a creative outlet, if you're looking to get a very cheap entry into these cameras for half the price or even less than you would pay for an Instax with film, then the Polaroid cameras are the way to go. They just offer a lot more creative variability at a much lower entry price for that creative variability. If you want the same amount of control with a Polaroid Originals camera and the same amount of quality product, such as glass lenses and aluminum or even metal parts, then the Polaroid camera will offer that at a much cheaper price when compared to the Instax. So in the end, the decision is up to you. I personally prefer the Polaroid original ones for my work. However, I'm a bit of a weirdo and I enjoy making difficult pictures that don't really look like good photographs, but rather have a lot of artistic elements inside them. If you want to make a photograph that's really crisp and sharp and represents colors accurately, then an Instax might be a little easier to learn and understand. Whereas if you're really wanting to delve into the rabbit hole of analog instant photography, a Polaroid will get you farther down said hole. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a wonderful evening, safe travels, blue skies and many happy landings, and I hope to see you in the next flying vlog, in the next video on this channel, whether it's about cameras, flight sim, drones or real world aviation. Thanks and have a good one.